Welcome to the FTS Simulation Channel. In this video, we will discuss one of the three designs of twin turbochargers, which is the parallel turbocharger. As for the other designs, there is the sequential turbocharger and also the staged turbocharger. We will discuss these in separate videos. Well, let's dive right into the parallel turbocharger discussion. The parallel turbocharger is a turbocharger design that uses more than one turbocharger unit on a single engine, where each turbocharger unit is the same size and can produce the same boost. In its application, this turbocharger is typically used in engines with multiple banks of cylinders, such as V engines and flat engines with two banks of cylinders. However, it doesn't stop there. Parallel turbochargers are also used in engines with a W configuration, which have four banks of cylinders. For instance, Bugatti Chiron and Bugatti Veyron. This means that V engines and flat engines use two turbochargers, while W engines with four cylinder banks use four turbochargers simultaneously. Occasionally, however, parallel turbocharger designs, such as the 2JZ engine, are used on engines with a straight four or six cylinder configuration. Now let's move on to the parts used. In general, the design of this turbocharger has the same parts as a typical turbocharger. First, there are at least two units of the same size turbocharger. Next is the intercooler. Above that is the blow-off and throttle body. Behind that is the intake manifold. And at the back is the exhaust manifold and two wastegates for each bank of cylinders. Okay, let's move on. Now let's get into how it works. For its operating system, it consists of three phases, starting with the first phase. In the first phase, the turbo starts to work to achieve the required air pressure, or boost. This phase is called the spooling process, starting from the exhaust gas produced by the engine, where the exhaust gas will move out through the exhaust manifold towards the turbine casing and rotate the turbine wheels before the exhaust gas can move out. On the other hand, the rotation obtained by the turbine wheels is directly transferred to the compressor wheels through the shaft connecting them. This compressor is responsible for taking air from the atmosphere and pushing it through the intercooler to the intake manifold. The function of the intercooler is that when the air experiences a sudden increase in pressure, the air will also experience an increase in temperature and density. This means that this condition can reduce the density of the oxygen and the intercooler functions to stabilize the temperature of the air with the goal of restoring the density of the oxygen levels. Of course, in this first phase, the boost produced is not significant and cannot maximize the performance of the vehicle. This state is called spooling. Next, the engine enters the second phase, the spool up. This phase is usually above 2,500 revolutions per minute, but it depends on the turbo size used because the larger the turbo size, the higher the engine speed required and vice versa. And once the turbo has entered the spool up phase, the power of the engine will increase. This phase continues until the engine has enough RPM to enter the third phase. Usually the third phase is above 3,500 revolutions per minute. In the third phase, as mentioned in the second phase, the turbo has reached its maximum boost and produces a power surge on the engine. Of course, the significant power surge that occurs will also produce exhaust gases with a large flow rate. This means that the exhaust gas spins the turbine wheel faster than the turbocharger needs it to, which of course affects the turbocharger's performance and can even damage the turbocharger. This condition is known as turbo surge, and to overcome it, a wastegate is needed to act as a bypass valve. As the name implies, the wastegate works by diverting the exhaust gas from the exhaust manifold directly to the exhaust pipe without passing through the turbine housing. And besides the wastegate, there is also the last component that we haven't explained yet. This component is the blow-off valve, just like the wastegate. The blow-off valve functions to overcome excess boost in the intake path. So, for the difference, if the wastegate is responsible for the exhaust manifold area, while the blow-off valve is responsible for the intake path and works when the throttle body suddenly closes when the engine is running at high speeds. And this blow-off is also responsible for a very distinctive sound in the turbocharger system. But it's worth noting that sometimes the beautiful sound can also be achieved by closing the blow-off valve path, but of course with its own risks. 
Okay, that's all the information we can provide about the turbocharger in this video. Feel free to discuss in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.